ックペッパーと名乗る者が現れたそうだな。Eh, don't worry about him. He's sorry. Yesterday's news. I swear, the show is more start and stop pushes than the WWE and AEW combined. We open this week with Ron about to enjoy some egg salad sandwiches, which for some of my stateside viewers might not sound the greatest, but as someone who has tasted in Japan, I could say it's really damn good, mostly because Japan has always had better mayo than ours. Huh, must be a Wednesday. And of course, being a food blogger, Ron had to dramatically talk about it whilst likely thinking up a thousand different hashtags. However, this attracted the attention of one of those background boys who I guess they decided to give a name this week, Takagi. <laughs> oh, I wish, but no, he was just there to say that Ron was a little weird. <laughs> that night, Takagi mysteriously disappeared. Now, of course, he wasn't drifted away, and instead provided a little foreshadowing while Ron reflected on what he said. Not helping matters were her friends butting in and almost exposing her social anonymity. <laughs> That's a command that needs to be used a lot more on the pinks of these shows. Yeah, but seriously, they did point out how Ron had chosen to keep her Insta, I mean Kirsta account a secret from their class, which honestly, good on her, especially in this rampant age of doxing. And I actually do kind of want to see the show cover this subject matter a little more eventually. However, instead, we got this conflict of Takagi calling her weird, even though it was a definite case of the pot calling the kettle black. In his case, not only was he putting dirty buckets on his head, he was also a textbook example of a pathological liar, which was news to Yui. Darn main heroin, everyone's just an amalgamation of quirks. Yeah, unfortunately, it seems like our lead cure's main source of intelligence is indeed her granny quotes, which, speaking of which, we may as well throw this in here since she doesn't quote her this week. Regardless, this was a source of trauma for Ron after an incident where she started spouting off some food facts to her friends and oh god, what's wrong with this kid's face? Oh yeah, this episode was animated by Mitsuru Aoyama, now wasn't it? Eh, the next Doremi Sharp review is also going to be animated by him, so I'll save most of my stuff until then. As I was saying, she started talking like Elton Brown and ended up driving them all away, which, yeah, this does feel vaguely similar to another Yellow's backstory. I mean, I won't say it's exactly the same, as this was more of Ron just being overly passionate rather than possibly showing signs of neurodivergence, which, hell, we already have that covered for this season. Still, she decided to make an effort to hold back a little. Wrong season, Ron! Though really, she didn't need to pay any attention to what this background character was saying, especially when he was being really annoying and hardly called out on his BS other than in this scene with Yui, and even then, she kind of acquiesced. Says the pathological liar. Yeah, needless to say, and even considering what's going to happen later, this episode is going to lose some points for making such an aggravating character. Oh well, at least we did get a decent visual gag out of it. Like, yeah, this does feel like some of the usual cheap animation of Frugal Ayama's playbook, but at least they were taking advantage of it to make a purposely funny visual gag, so good on y'all. And we even got an equally funny scene at the Lair of the Bundles, as we got some follow-up from last week with Narcissus trying to come up with a new salute. Go! Go! Go, Web, go! Unfortunately, he couldn't figure one out, so they just stuck with the salute that at least makes Doctor Strange love happy. Later, to cheer Ron up, they of course decided to use ramen, or more specifically, roped her into making some. And it 
really didn't take much to get her into it. Barely an inconvenience. Granted, I did like that it was triggered by them messing up the order of steps by not making a dashi or soup base first, so she got out all the standard umami boosters to make it. Yeah, personally, I really like seeing them going through the whole process of making it while stating some food facts, and really hope that stuff like this will overtake them food prawning the whole time. Yeah, yeah, we get its delicious smile and all that, now can we move on to something that doesn't look like it was made on a $5 budget? Well, thankfully, we did get a good quote, from Rosemary. But yeah, as I said, Yui didn't have any grandma quotes this week. Oh well, maybe next week she'll say something so good it'll complete Amine's face turn. And Rosemary's speech was pretty good, basically stating that you should just like what you like because everyone's different. And yeah, I guess you could also interpret that in a different way for this particular character, but I won't say any more, and I'll just let you all interpret it however you want. Anyway, Ron basically said screw Takagi and his lying ass, so yeah, may as well just end the episode here. Well, no, Mrs. Nagumi just suddenly came in with a big exposition dump explaining how Mrs. Takagi wanted them to make a lunch for her son as he was living on his own after his brother had moved out. Everybody got that? Good! Oh, and also, Yui only now realized Takagi had told another lie. Well, duh. I mean, yeah, his brother was studying astrology, so it could become true one day, but he was still embellishing it. And yet, even though he has acted like a genuine putz throughout this episode, and we even emphasized how much his words negatively affected Ron, we're now supposed to feel bad for the guy? I mean, I get it, he was using his lies to garner attention because he was lonely without his brother, but again, this whole plot point was just kind of exposited to us without any real build-up. Also, yes, I have seen a certain other toy animation do a pathological liar episode much better, but more on that at the end. Anyway, Ron spotted Takagi going into what I'm guessing is a self-service diner where they were serving Nikujaga, and she noticed that- Oh yeah? But yeah, since we've seen civilians enjoying their food, that of course meant Monster of the Week fight! And Narcissus turned something that I thought was a rice cooker at first, but judging by that size and its later attack, I think it's more likely a pressure cooker, which can be used as a rice cooker, but was probably used to make that Nikujaga. Hell, it even kind of looks like mine. Anyway, visually, this fight was, of course, nothing good. It's Aoyama standard fare. Still, it was kind of made up for by Ron's clever tactic of escaping the monster steam beams by hitting the ground. Though, I'm pretty sure when it's firing from that angle, it should still be hitting her face, but whatever, let's just wrap things up. Ron went into the diner and kind of rudely took from Takagi's plate. Huh? What? I was just spying on you through the window over there. Is there something weird? Weird about that? And she learned the reason he wanted Nikujago was, not too surprisingly, because he wanted to be reminded of his brother. Though what was good, he noted that this diner didn't have the same sweetness as his brother's, which Ron deduced was likely due to the lack of caramelization on the onions, which makes a lot of sense. I mean, if you make the dish at home, you can take all the time you want to cook the onions. However, this was a self-service diner, likely designed with quick overturn in mind. Again, I really like food facts and cookie processes like this and wish they could get more focus in the show about cooking. Anyway, of course he acknowledged that Ron's weirdness was kind of cool and the episode ended with him getting his precious meat and taters. This was an okay-ish Ron episode. I mean, the character herself was quite good, but the conflict she went through was just kind of... Eh. Obviously, the biggest issue I have with it is the character of Takagi himself, whose major traits were being the instigator of this main conflict and the uh, pathological liar, the latter of which relatively didn't play that much into the episode. Thus, it's a pity that the biggest lie of this episode is the title itself. 
For me, Takagi started off as a background character and ended as one. I mean, they tried to flesh him out, but a lot of it felt ham-fisted with exposition dumps and, in my opinion, did make up for a lot of his previous kind of dickish behavior, which he didn't even repent for. Yeah, they tried to justify his pathological lying by saying that there was some truth to it, but he was still outright lying about a lot of other stuff, which is a bad habit to maintain, especially as you get older. Hell, a kid much younger than him in Ojama Jodoremi learned this lesson. Nobuko, throughout her early episode in the first season, knew that lying was wrong, but couldn't help herself as it also acted as a creative outlet for her. And when she did go too far with one of the main characters, Aiko, she was rightfully chewed out for it. However, when they learned that she was using it as a creative outlet as well as to get closer to Aiko, which was hinted at throughout the episode, they compromised and made her realize that she should try and confine her tall tales to just paper. Obviously, this is a much more satisfying resolution than allowing this boy to continue to cry wolf just because they offhandedly learned that he was a little lonely without his brother, who we barely even saw. However, this plot point just couldn't get the focus it needed because they also had to tell the tale of the yellow of this team overcoming her eccentricities, which to be fair, even if that is a little played out, it was pretty well told here, and I did like how Ron did spout out a lot of food facts. As you can tell, I relate highly with characters like that, and actually wish this stuff were more prominent in this cooking anime. However, this stuff was mostly resolved by the first half of the episode, leaving us with the undercooked second half with Takagi. Thus, overall, while Ron is still a very enjoyable character, and I did like her little storyline of accepting her weirdness, the subplot with Takagi felt underwhelming and yet also frustrating when his lies were just overlooked. It doesn't completely ruin the episode, and I didn't even mind most of Fugo Ayama's animation, but it also did make it feel a little undercooked like those onions. There are also some other series-wide issues that I have, but we'll probably save that for next week, as I get the feeling a lot of them will come to a head. Currently, we're working on part 2 of the Yu-Gi-Oh! opening ranking video, and so far I gotta say, this one has some pretty good ones. I mean, yeah, it is going to rank my picks for 22nd to 12th best openings, but honestly, they're all still really good in my opinion, which honestly just goes to show how good the Yu-Gi-Oh! franchise's soundtrack has always been. Seriously, look up some of the stuff. And of course, also look forward to the video itself, but until then though, farewell for now my friends, and if you excuse me, I just gotta put this back in the kitchen. Legit, it's a pain to have to move these props around like this. Oh, my back.